right, we're back, and uh, we're about ready to uh, start laying up our uh, carbon fiber landing gear. So the first thing we're going to need is uh, several materials. The first thing I'm going to use is a, uh, a three-quarter ounce glass cloth. It's a bi-directional cloth, and the reason I'm using this is basically for two reasons. First of all, it makes it easier to work with because we're going to have to fold and roll this uh, laminate. And the second thing is, when I get the, the laminate out of the mold, there's going to need to be some sanding and stuff done. And this way I won't sand through the carbon fiber itself, which is the strength bearing part of the landing gear. So in order to do this, you're going to need, uh, this is a unidirectional carbon fiber. This is the actual structural part of the landing gear. And that's how much we'll be using for this landing gear. We also have a bi-directional carbon fiber cloth that actually goes on the outside. This provides some torsional strength. It helps to keep the uh, unidirectional carbon fiber from separating. And it also gives that cool carbon fiber look uh, on the outside of the landing gear when we're done. So let's get started. We're also going to need a real good, good quality epoxy laminating resin. So the first thing you do is mix your resin per the instructions. Uh, according for the, to the literature, you're supposed to mix it for two minutes. I've already been mixing on this a little bit. So make sure it's good. Looks good. I also laid down a piece of, uh, this happens to be vacuum bag material, but any kind of plastic material you can lay down on your workbench to work on. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to clean up and a lot easier to handle the laminate. So the first thing I need is I'm going to take and lay my first layer down, which is the bi-directional fiberglass cloth, three-quarter ounce. And I'm going to get it thoroughly impregnated with resin. Now don't worry about give it, getting it too rich. The main thing is you want to get out all air bubbles. And get it laying down flat. Whoops. No wrinkles suck too, so get the wrinkles out. Here we go. I don't know what I just did. And there we go. So now we got that done. Nice and flat, no air bubbles. Now this uh, bi-directional carbon fiber, we don't want to orient the carbon fiber strands at 45 degree angles to this uh, laminate. So I basically had some one inch tape that was not serving any other useful purpose around here, so I decided to use it for this. But basically it just goes on here like this. Maybe if I put it on the right way around, it'll look right. There, that's looking like it's supposed to be. And if you're using multiple pieces like this, you can just slightly overlap them. Although, this particular uh, the loads that this carrying are minimal. The main reason I use carbon fiber in this application is because for this, la for this layer of the laminate is because uh, actually for cosmetic reasons it makes it look, look like carbon fiber. The only problem with working with 45 degree carbon fiber is it's real easy to displace it and have it not be 45 anymore. So we got to be careful of that. One more piece on the end here. There we go. Now I'm going to put a little more resin on there. And we got to be very careful wetting this out. Try to get most of the air out of that. Although and there we go. Now, 
The main structural part, as I said before, is the unidirectional, so we'll put that on next. And you're going to notice that I'm going to overlap it here. It's actually twice as wide as the laminate that I got going so far. That will become clear in a second here. Usually at this point you've got almost enough resin in there to uh, to wet this out without putting any in additional, but I'm going to put a little more on there anyway. What the heck, I mixed it. Okay, so we'll get this out of here. You want to keep these uh, unidirectional strands as straight as possible. So now comes the tricky part. I want to fold that carbon, that uh, unidirectional carbon fiber in half. Start down here. Straighten back out here. There we go. Now, I actually made some marks on this. Some layout marks. This is going to be our core material here. It's just a uh, it's actually a foam that's uh, used for sealing around windows. I got it at the aviation department at the local hardware store. And these are going in those slots we, we uh, made in the mold. This is where that uh, bi-directional glass cloth helps. It's a lot easier to grab hold of. Okay, there we go. Get that done. Let's see if we can get it the rest of the way here. I basically just want to fold that across and make sure the carbon fiber is wrapped all the way around that. There we go. Now we're now ready to put it in our mold. Looks pretty good so far. So we'll do that now. So here we are at our mold. Lay that right in there. Oops. Oops. This positioned right in our slot here. Make sure it's positioned properly. There we go. Core's position in the proper position here. That looks good. Now we have some extra material here. The bottom of the gear leg needs to be stronger. So we're actually going to fold that over in there. Same on this side here.
Okay, so now we got all this down. Perfect. Now we're going to take this very carefully, slip it on here. Okay. <clears throat> and you'll note that I put uh, plastic bags on my glut or my uh, clamps because it sucks when they get covered in uh, epoxy resin. Let that clamp down tight. side okay now we're gonna glue some little blocks on here so I could put a clamping wire on it without crushing the foam size. Perfect. Now we just gotta wait for it to cure. Also make sure you put some uh, catch rags underneath it because it will be dripping epoxy for a little bit. In a few hours we'll be ready to uh, see what we see if we were successful. Okay, now that we've given it a suitable amount of time to cure. In this case, about 16 hours. Um, we need to remove our part from the mold. I'd like to say there's a real elegant way to do this, but I've never found one. We pretty much just gotta bust it out. So let's get with it. So far, there's that bar. Oh, yeah, kind of fun, actually. Okay, a little rough looking now, but uh, now you'll see why we put that hairspray on there so we can take this and just peel it right off. It turned out beautiful.
Okay, now we'll take it over to the bandsaw and cut off these uh, sharp, sharp edges here. Let's see what we got. Okay, here we are. We need to cut off all the, basically the flash around the edges here, and get down to our bare part. <laughs> 